a flood of rain in an African country. Flood of rain. The rain is coming speedily. It's coming, it's warming up. Flood. And he took a lake, a river, a sea, joined together. So we should pray for an African country. It's two places. One is an Asian country, one is an African country, but like a Chinese area. But this other one is African, black. So two, and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray that the Lord will vindicate us in the name of Jesus Christ. Southern Chile struggled with huge wildfires. Obviously, there's much of America as you see in New Earthquakes, volcano eruptions, forest fires, and now this. This natural disaster for the country is now battling unimaginable floods in the world's driest desert. At the Amat Desert region, torrential rain has turned the streets into theater. The Kokyakwa River, which 24 hours ago carried almost no water, overran its banks. Hospitals are partially in the water. Roads are blocked and communities cut off. For the north of Gantapagasta region, authorities have ordered the evacuation of at least 30,000 people. President Michel Bachelet declared a state of emergency and gone personally to the flood stricken areas to oversee relief efforts. I am afraid of a plane crash. The manner the thing will crash. has been identified. That man you see there on your screens, he was a 28-year-old German national named Andreas Lubitz. Investigators used black box audio files to reconstruct what happened. They say the pilot left the cockpit, perhaps to use the restroom, and then co-pilot Lubitz locked him out and set a course for descent. For several minutes, there was only the sound of his breathing while the pilot tried to get back in, growing more frantic with each attempt, while ground control also tried to make contact. Families of the victims today made a difficult journey. They traveled as close as they could get to the scene of the crash. They were accompanied by Red Cross workers and counselors on their flight. Well, at this point in time, the victims are the main concern of German Wings and their parent company, Lufthansa. CNN senior international correspondent Chris Pleiken sat down with Lufthansa CEO for an exclusive interview and asked him how he broke the news to the victims' families that the crash was deliberate. Investigators used black box audio files to reconstruct what happened. They say the pilot left the cockpit, perhaps to use the restroom, and then co-pilot Lubitz locked him out and set a course for descent. For several minutes, there was only the sound of his breathing while the pilot tried to get back in, growing more frantic with each attempt, while ground control also tried to make contact. Families of the victims today made... through the air <laughs> at the spirit of the Lord directing me ah. hello hello ah. this one the cold body I see flood flood of water one will happen in Nigeria the rest in, is, is in another country. But I was asking God, what is this kind of flood? Is it, is it, what did I used to call, call it? Is it tsunami or what the, eh? Tsunami or what they call it? Eh? Eh? The language is too much. Hello? Is, what, there's something they call volcano, right? Eh? it's among what I got the, the Lord revealed to me and I said the people in worry and that touch to pray 
against flood. It's drawing closer. It's drawing closer. That should pray. And Jesus will uphold our country in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up your hands. We sanctify the whole world with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify Nigeria with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify all our men of God with the blood of Jesus. Lift up your hand to us, heaven. Rescue workers in eastern Japan are evacuating people from homes submerged by devastating floods. Torrential rain pummeled wide areas as a tropical storm cut across the country's main island. A levee broke on the Kinugawa River about 60 kilometers from Tokyo. You can see it collapsing next to the falling tree. Officials in Joso City say this happened just after noon Thursday. Police say they've received reports that houses and cars were swept away, some with people inside. They say they're having difficulty reaching inundated areas because of strong currents. Prefectural officials say seven people in Joso City are missing. Rescue crews are using helicopters to evacuate stranded residents. They've airlifted about 50 people from balconies and rooftops, and many are turning to social media to appeal for help. The man on the lower part of your screen clung to a pole for over an hour before rescuers arrived. Local officials say some 200 people are still stranded. About 100 sought shelter on the second floor of a supermarket. Employees say the floodwater rose to two meters inside the store. Thousands have fled to evacuation centers, but some of those buildings have also been flooded. Land ministry officials say nearly 7,000 homes and other buildings may have been damaged in Joso City alone. We have seen massive floods and landslides in a wide area around Tokyo as a tropical storm ripped through the main island of Japan. Rising floodwaters also inundated homes in Tochigi Prefecture. Part of a hot springs resort hotel collapsed. Generators at two water power plants have submerged and become inoperable. One woman went missing in a landslide in the prefecture. Weather officials say the storm has changed to a low pressure system over the Sea of Japan, but humid air continues to flow in, leaving a belt of rain clouds. Some parts of Tochigi Prefecture have had more than 500 millimeters of rain over the past 24 hours. That's more than double the amount of rain the region typically receives for the entire month of September. Those of you that do business on the ships, bro, I see ships coming like this. And a wave, wave, <laughs> wave, rise and all everything on that road sank sank into the sea no one come out all the big big ship was swallowed hello those of you that do business on the sea talk to your people and this thing will happen there's the rain and this rain is just only on the sea from the beginning of the sea. Anywhere they come from. I don't know. But all I know, God wants to do something. God, there are some people doing evil on the sea. And you know when God is passing through something, He will blow trumpet. Let the righteous that are there to, let the righteous that is there, vamoose. Hello? Do what? If there are no vamoose, anything that wants to happen, to anybody who happened. That is the reason why God said the children of Israel should put water, should slaughter a ram and put the blood on the doorpost so that when the angel is passing, it will not destroy. So this is another way of telling you, you, run away. They had had a week to prepare, but when it came, it was devastating. Cyclone Pam simply tore these Pacific Islands apart as the population bunkered down. About 10 minutes ago, the, the door to the entire balcony door on my bedroom has uh, smashed. Uh, the wind is howling through my bedroom. I'm in the bathroom. I've, I've got my back against the door. Um, and I'm, I'm listening to the roof, which sounds like it's lifting, and I'm just holding on for dear life here. This isn't fun. 
The destruction of Vanuatu's main island is clear. What isn't yet is the impact on all the others, where many of the quarter of a million population live. The cyclone enveloped virtually the entire sprawling archipelago, made up of 83 different islands. The wind last night was howling. It really did sound like the ocean. Uh, rain was pelting down. We had trees up roost and, and flying into the house. Um, I found it terrifying. I can only imagine what um, people out in vulnerable communities felt. At least eight are reported to have died, and there's a looming threat of hunger, thirst and disease. It's not just fallen trees and collapsed power lines. Entire villages have been blown away. And for a nation reliant on growing its own food, there's been untold damage to crops. The UN is preparing a major relief operation. There are grave fears of a rising death toll. The cyclone may have moved on, but the day after has only just started in Vanuatu. Food, shelter and medical supplies will begin arriving in a few hours' time when the airport is expected to reopen. And when daylight comes, the extent of destruction and of lives lost will also emerge. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have so some prophecy concerning the world and concerning Nigeria and concerning you. A more prophecy. Praise the Lord. I told you last time, I told you last time to we should pray against flood all over the country, right? And all over the world. I mentioned some countries. I mentioned America, and that one has gone, but it's still there. <laughs> it's not yet over in America because I'm still seeing some flood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you in Nigeria, don't fold your hands. Tell anybody, don't fold your hands. Because I see a very mighty flood coming. Mighty what? Flood coming. Millions in the southeast are dealing with some of the worst flooding in the area's history. Torrential rain forced hundreds of rescues Sunday in South Carolina. The flooding has killed at least seven people in the Carolinas. South Carolina's governor says a downpour like this happens only once in a thousand years. Several cities have already broken rainfall records for October. Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, received more than two feet of rain in the last few days. David Begno is in Columbia, the state capital, where about a foot of rain has fallen. David, good morning. Nora, good morning. I'm standing in a sinkhole, and behind me is a tax business that was destroyed when a wall of water rushed through it. There are scenes like this all over the city of Columbia. As calls for help came in yesterday, the water was rising almost at the same time. More than 200 people were rescued here in the city. Around town right now, people who have water have been told they need to boil it, and those who don't have been told they may be without it for three to four days. It's a disaster here. Oh my God, the truck is sinking. The truck is sinking. The devastating flooding hitting South Carolina has reached catastrophic levels. At least five people have been killed in the state and officials are worried that number will rise. Several days of relentless rainfall have left roads so saturated on Sunday, many of them gave way. We haven't seen this level of rain in the low country in a thousand years. That's how big this is. Crews rescued hundreds of people from fast moving floodwaters. Yep, he just made a mistake. The driver of this pickup truck tried to drive through a flooded street, but his car was quickly overtaken. A man swam in to try to rescue him, but moments later, he too was trapped in the high water. Both men were rescued by emergency crews in a scene that is playing out across this state. This is Gills Creek. The water here has risen, we're told, at least 10 feet. And there's concern of another dam failure just right up the road. 
We've learned at least five dams have failed in Lexington and Richland counties, flooding those communities and prompting county officials to issue a curfew. 600 National Guardsmen have been activated, 8,000 are on standby. The Coast Guard rescued this woman and her 15-month-old child after they became stranded in their home in Charleston. This is an incident we've never had before because it's water and it's slow moving and it's sitting and we can't just take the water out. We were there as Ronald Austin retrieved medicine from the flooded home of his 84-year-old father. A neighbor with a kayak helped Austin make the potentially life-saving trip. Just a, a godsend right there. You'd be able to, somebody to give you a ride there. You know, that was just almost like an answer to a prayer. Officials in South Carolina waking up to lingering fears that more catastrophic flooding and new dam breaches could be on the way. From the river standpoint, we haven't hit the worst of it yet. Monday night, eight dams failing, buckling under the pressure of historic rains. 18 failing since Saturday. Some areas seeing more than 20 inches. The deluge to blame for more than a dozen deaths in the Carolinas. Just because the rain stops does not mean that we are out of the woods. This road collapsed in Lugoff, claiming the life of a man driving with a female passenger. The vehicle careening through barricades. She survived, pulled from the overturned wreckage amid rushing water. In Ridgeville, a chilling rescue of a different kind. Floodwaters unearthing caskets from a nearby cemetery. That's somebody's family out there. So, we gotta I mean, show respect. This is this is respect. We gotta respect the dead. This man risking his own life, venturing into waist deep water, pushing a casket to shore. In the hard hit area of downtown Columbia, the Congaree River peaking to the highest it's been in decades, covering interstate roads, leaving homes underwater, and washing out bridges. Now at least six nearby states sending emergency workers into South Carolina for added flood relief. So far, 1,300 National Guard members are on duty. Crews in Black Hawk helicopters leading statewide rescue efforts. Sad because people have lost their businesses, they've lost homes, and it affected everybody across the board. It did not discriminate. The devastation prompting President Obama to declare South Carolina a major disaster area, ordering federal aid. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a plane crash. But this is not... This one I'm looking at, this is not Nigeria. What is the problem? Now work on this plane. Because I'm looking at the engineers working on this plane now. This plane now has not taken any passenger. So I've seen engineers working on this. They worked on it. But what now happened? On the same thing they worked on. The calling service. The team break up. On air. I did not see anybody surviving in this plane crash. Because what break up in that plane is not something that you can just quickly change it over to the next engine in the body of this plane this plane is white in the body of this plane i am seeing red red from the tail down to the middle i am seeing red something like red Praise the Lord. Between now, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we should pray against a, a plane crash. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, including. 
On tomorrow of what? Pray. But it's not Nigeria. It's not a Nigerian plane. But I'm seeing one in Nigeria, but I don't know when. But this is a technical problem. The one in Nigeria, but this one outside is not a technical problem. Cloud. What kind of cloud is this? I don't know. Then crash. No surviving. Nobody survived. No water to land inside. I give a message about an European airline that will have a technical problem. And I will say technical problem. Praise the Lord. And I give another one. I say, hey, this is an aircraft. It will take off from somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. You want to land and you will land into the water. And I say we should pray for the survivor of the souls of those that will land. That I'm not seeing anybody surviving it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 This is CNN Breaking News. CNN, a Russian passenger plane traveling from Egypt to Russia has crashed in the central Sinai. Nick Robertson uh, is live for us in Moscow this hour, uh, gathering details. Nick, what more can you tell us? Well, the latest we have from the, the state media here is that it was an Airbus 321, and that it was carrying 224 people. That's 217 passengers and seven crew. Um, it was on flight uh, from Sharm El Sheikh in the Sinai, uh, a holiday destination, on its way to St. Petersburg. Uh, it disappeared from the radar screens 23 minutes after it took off. This is according to an advisor to the head of the Federal Air Transport uh, Agency here in Russia. Um, the airline, the uh, air carrier itself, um, um, Koglin, Kogli Miava um, has been around here. It was established in 1993, so it's been around for about 20 or so years. The carrier itself, flight 9268, was the flight number of this aircraft. It's believed to have had a lot of uh, Russian holidaymakers on board returning back to St. Petersburg early this morning. 23 minutes after it took off, it disappeared uh, on its flight path over the Sinai. Nick, reiterate for viewers who may just be joining us, please, your information about uh, the, the name uh, of the, the, the plane itself and, and how many passengers you understand that were on board. 224 people total on board. Of those, 217 were passengers. The other seven were crew members. This was flight 9268. Um, Kogal Miava is the name of the airline. Uh, this is an airline that was established in 1993, so it's quite familiar uh, to many people here. It was en route from Sharm El Sheikh to St. Petersburg when it disappeared off the radar. After about 23 minutes after taking off, it disappeared as it was flying over the Sinai um, in Egypt. This was the last uh, moment that it was seen on the radars, uh, uh, and subsequent to that, we understand that there has been a search to find uh, uh, possible sightings of wreckage. Nick Robertson, uh, live on the line with us from Moscow. Nick, thank you so much for your uh, new information and reporting. And to reiterate what Nick has brought to us, this plane, a, a Kogalniava plane, uh, flight number 9268, has crashed in central Sinai. Uh, according to Nick's reporting, some 224 people on board. Uh, and again, this was an Airbus A321 jet. Uh, that crashed again in central Sinai. We will, of course, continue to dig for information to learn more 
about where the plane crashed, about people who were on board this plane uh, as we continue here on CNN. We'll be right back. This is CNN.